A lot of people have asked me to do a video on an open source model, so today we are gonna combine Mistral 7B with GPT-4 Vision to create prompts for AI images like this. All of this will be done in Python, so let's just get started. These are the steps we are gonna follow when we are gonna run our open source model. You can see this is Llama 2, but it works just as well with uh, Mistral 7B. The first step is to download a large language model. So here we're gonna head over to Hugging Face. We are gonna go to this site here. I'm gonna leave a link in the description. We are gonna select the Mistral 7B Instruct model. So there are a few different versions of this. So the one I picked is this Q5 model. So this is large, very low quality loss, recommended. The size is 5.13 gigabytes. So we're just gonna click on this and download the model. When the model is finished downloaded, just create a folder in your Python environment that's called model. So I'm just gonna drag this uh, model over to this folder here. Great, and that's about it. Then we can move on to step two, just preparing your Python environment. You can just follow the steps here. You can see we have to install the Llama CPP Python. This is actually this here, so we can follow just pip install Llama CPP Python, just copy that. Just head over to your terminal or just go to Visual Studio Code, pip install Llama CPP Python, enter. You can see I already has this installed, so yeah, that's basically it. You can see that the installation will fail if a C++ compiler cannot be located. So just follow this link here and we're gonna install Visual Studio Community and we're gonna follow like the C++ installation guide. So you can kinda see this is what we need, right? So you can follow these links here. We need the CMake tools, C++ core features. And yeah, you can basically, if you don't already have that installed. So that is only if the installation failed here. And now we are actually ready to run this, so we're just gonna copy this Python code here to test if everything is okay. I'm gonna go back to VSC here, I'm gonna create this, I'm gonna save it. Then I'm gonna set my folder path to where I have saved my Mistral 7B model, right? Then we can just open the terminal, run python test.py and see if this is working. So you can see it's loading the model. I have not set up this now to use my GPU. Maybe I cover that in another video, but you can see we got the response here, right? Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The question was, what are the names of the days of the week? So yeah, perfect. That is working. Okay, so now that we have our open source model set up and ready to use, we are just going to do some simple coding, try to integrate GPT for Vision, so we kind of can combine those two models. So I just started by creating a function for our Mistral 7B model. This takes on a query, we set the max token, we load our model here, we set our temperature, and we set our context window. This is gonna be set to 4K. And here you can see I set verbose, I don't know if you can see it, but verbose is set to false. This is just because we don't have to see all the text when it's actually loading the model every time, right? So basically, all this is gonna do is take the query as an input and it's gonna return a generated text. And to do the GPT-4 vision, we want to encode our images into base64 as usual, right? And here is a simple GPT-4 vision uh, function. This is just gonna take an image path, it's gonna take a prompt and a system prompt and return a description of the image we put in, right? So this is the GPT-4 vision preview. And yeah, of course, you need to set your API key, system prompt, and we're gonna pass the prompt here. And yeah, so let's take a quick look here. So this is just to add some colors when we run it in the terminal. Here, I'm just gonna set an image path that we want to feed into our GPT-4 vision model. I've done a system prompt for the GPT-4 vision model. Expert at analyzing images in great detail. Extract all information from the image. Pretty straightforward. Since our task is gonna be to try to recreate this image here we have of this actress, we are gonna do a prompt here equals open file image prompt.txt. If we take a look at this image prompt I created here, it's just don't write the identity of the person in image. Just GPT for Vision doesn't like to do if we do that. So just give a detailed description of the fashion style, posture, physique, hair color, and skin tone of the woman. And just uh, bring back the answer, right? 
Next, we create this variable description. We're gonna pass the image path. We're gonna pass this prompt we just had a look at and our system prompt. And we're gonna print like the fashion style description. And we're gonna take that description we get and feed it into a new prompt here that is called image P. So this is basically here we are gonna bring back the information we got from GPT-4 Vision. And this is gonna be passed on to the um, Mistral 7B model. So from the fashion style and the physique information above, right, above here. Create a stable diffusion image prompt and we have a prompt example here I just found that describes the image. And we have an answer here so we're gonna get the answer back. And that is basically just a simple setup we have. So again, this is just gonna uh, trigger the G generate uh, Mistral 7B output. We're gonna feed in a query that is gonna be this ID here, right? And we're gonna set the max token to 1000. And yeah, that is basically it. So now I think we can run it, uh, run this and see if it works in practice. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it. So the reason why it's so good to use like an open source model like Mistral B if you want to generate AI images like I call it offline or just on your computer is because these preparatory models like GPT-4, ChatGPT, Anthropic, Gemini, Bard and stuff, they don't really want to give you anything that's like slightly on the edge and this could like make or break your cool images, right? So using an open source model like Mistral for this is very good because it doesn't really bother if like the, let's say the term is like curvy or sexy or something like that. So we can kind of get whatever response prompt we want. Uh, but now you can see kind of this uh, is finished. Uh, I'm only running this on my CPU and even though I was just still talking, it was pretty quick to respond with all of this. So it's a very efficient model. But let's take a look here. So you can see we kind of got the fashion style description. We got the posture here. We got the physique in terms of hair and skin tone. Perfect. Now you can see we kind of fed all this in this prompt, right? And we have a question. We asked Mistral. So he wants to describe the image and he gives us an answer. And this is perfect. You can see the only answer we get back is this prompt here. So what I can do now is I can copy this prompt. I can head over to my uh, image generator, right? And I can paste in the prompt here. We can kind of select our sampling steps. Let's just do 70 now before we blow it up. And yeah, this could be another video if you want to learn how to generate images just offline. So let's click generate here now. And remember, this is the image we kind of want to imitate, right? So let's see what our model can do here. It starts off pretty good with like a pink dress. So let's just let this run and see where this ends. Okay, so this is what we ended up with. You can kind of see, yeah, I gotta say, this did a pretty good job. So I think Mistral here described the image pretty well. And I think like our image generator executed well. Okay, so I ran the prompt again. Let's grab this new prompt and try this one. So again, I would say this is pretty good. Kind of similar style. I don't know about that pocket, but other than that, pretty good. Uh, let's try a completely different. Now let's try to recreate this kind of weird looking house here. So I just changed up the prompt a bit. Now it's just going to describe the design style of the house. And it's going to return a prompt that describes the house. So let's just run this. Okay, so we got the prompt back. Let's just look down here. Let's copy this prompt. Let's go back to our model. Let's paste it in and run it. Okay, so we got something here. Let's try to crank up the sample steps and do it one more time. Okay, so we got this back. So I gotta say this nailed it. Yeah, this is kind of the, exactly the same style. I know it's not exactly the same style, but yeah, I will give this a great pass. So let's move on and try to show you what I meant by that Mistral 7B open source model can give you more... Uh, explicit prompts. Okay, so let's say you needed to create some kind of character for a movie or something and you had this image you kind of liked and with the Mistral 7B open source model we can kind of get more explicit prompts, right? Like I said, so we can go like from the style of the character can you describe a prompt that visually describes the character as a naked serial killer covered in blood? 
let's say you needed that for a movie or some kind of series or something. So let's try to run this and actually see if we can get this kind of prompt. Okay, so we have the prompt here. A slender figure clad entirely in white with pale skin and blood-stained hands. The hair is deserved and matte. There are visible cuts and bruises on the body. Overall feel of the image should be dark and foreboding. So I'm gonna run this in the image generator. I might have to blur this. But yeah, you can kind of see what kind of responses we can get. I don't think we would have gotten this from like a GPT-4 or something. So let's test it out with our image generator. Okay, so as you see, I had to blur some of this because it's kind of explicit, right? But uh, yeah, you can see this could be used like in a movie character or something if someone needed an ID for that. As always, I will of course upload this code to the community GitHub. If you want to support me and become a member, I will of course invite you to that GitHub. Uh, but I think that's gonna wrap it up for Mr. 7B for today But it's not gonna be the last video on this open source model because you can see here It's easy to fine-tune on any task. So we might be diving into that uh, Yeah in a future video, but yeah, I really recommend trying this if you are into open source model It's a great model and it's very efficient. I was just running it on my CPU now So yeah, I might do it uh, on a GPU soon. I think it would even perform better but yeah, thank you for tuning in, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.